you know that one third of Zambia's landmass is protected and reserved as conservation areas? These areas are characterized by beautiful landscapes and charismatic wildlife that are an epitome of wildlife safari and tourism. Through tourism, the local people benefit from jobs, but also the government collects a considerable amount of revenue. Apart from tourism, all the plants, the animals and the microbes in this area interact in a complex manner to form what is referred to as an ecosystem. And these ecosystems provide ecosystem services. And these ecosystem services are so important for the survival of man and the planet. Some of the ecosystem services include the provision of clean water. Did you know that the entire city of Lusaka's water supply comes from the Kafue River? And the large part of that river is conserved in these conservation areas. Part of the carbon that we emit from our cars and industries is trapped and absorbed in a large expanse of forests and plants, thereby mitigating the effects of climate change. A lot of effort and energies have been invested by the government, the conservation community, and the local people to preserve these areas from exploitation and degradation. And the biggest threats to these areas are poaching and habitat loss through human development. These threats are addressed by a model of law enforcement through the use of armed rangers. These rangers risk their lives defending these animals and their homes. Ironically, they face danger from the same animals that they are trying to protect, but also, more importantly, there is an ever-present risk of being shot in gun exchange with the poachers. And this model has scored measurable success in bringing the culprits to book, but also limiting the effects of poaching. However, there are other potential threats that this model does not address. And that threat is the threat of infectious diseases. The idea that wildlife and biodiversity is the source and origin of new and emerging infections, diseases, is merely stating the obvious. Where else would a new pathogen come from? It is not that their mechanism of transmission is in any way unnatural, but it is rather the opportunities for their emergence that are changing and probably on the increase. These threats, these opportunities, are driven by man and human development, and not wildlife. These opportunities are due to the increase in human population that forces us to go into wildlife areas and cut huge chunks of land for the purpose of agriculture to feed our growing population. It is the increase in exploitation and trade in wildlife and wildlife products that lays these opportunities bare. Our interaction, the ease of travel at global scale, presents the opportunities for the spread of these diseases, as the case of Ebola and COVID-19. Let me give a few examples to demonstrate the devastating effects of infectious disease on wildlife populations. In 1994, in the Serengeti National Park of Tanzania, one-third of the lion population died from canine distemper. It's an infectious disease of domestic dogs. You can just imagine this. One-third of that population represented 1,000 lions. When you go to the Kruger National Park, the buffalo population 
today is devastated by bovine tuberculosis. This is a disease of cattle. And the threat is not only on the buffalo population, but the predators that feed on these buffaloes. It is feared that in the near future, we might lose the entire lion population in the Kruger National Park. The Ethiopian wolf is on the brink of extinction because of rabies and canine distemper, diseases of domestic dogs. But let me draw your attention to Zambia. The Kafue flat, a semi-aquatic antelope species, only found in Zambia, on the Kafue flats, has had this population drop from 80,000 in the 1980s to just over 20,000 in 2018, a drop of about 70% loss. And this drop is due to poaching and infectious disease. And the two infectious diseases implicated in, this population, in, the de in the decline of this population is bovine tuberculosis and brucellosis, also referred to as contagious abortion. So, so uh, bovine TB is a chronic debilitating disease that affects adult animals. And the studies done on the Kafue floods has shown that 25% of the lateral population is already infected with this uh, pathogen. Brucellosis, also referred to as contagious abortion. This disease is a reproductive disease that stifles the population to grow from birth. And one in every four lateres is already infected with this. The combined effects of these two diseases has already been demonstrated on the Kafue floods. One of the species that was originally found on the Kafue floods is now locally extinct. The blue wildebeest is no more on the Kafue floods. This is the biggest conservation story of our times in Zambia today. But this is not the first local extinction to happen in Zambia. The Luangwa Valley was host to over 12,000 black rhinos in the 1980s. By, 20, by 1998, all the black rhinos were wiped out due to poaching for their horns. However, there's good news, because the Zambian government, in collaboration with the partners, decided to reintroduce the black rhino into the valley. And today, we have a small but growing population of black rhinos in the Luangwa Valley. This is one of the biggest success conservation stories in Africa today. And I'm proud that I played a small part into that success. Now, if you have to transfer the success from the Luangwa Valley into the Kafue Flats, it may not yield the same results. Because, unlike poaching, it is difficult to sterilize an infection from a wildlife population, and also more difficult from the environment. Today, we can decide to introduce 2,000 wildebeest population in the Kafue floods. And surely, these wildebeest would still meet the same fate, because the threat that eliminated the first population is still present today. We can decide, let's take enough rangers into the Kafue floods to protect the current lateral population. And we achieve zero poaching. The end result is that the lateral population would still continue to diminish and to decline and probably follow the same fate as that of the wildebeest. Because it is difficult to get rid of infectious disease in wildlife populations. The point to take home is that infectious disease and pathogens are a silent threat to our wildlife population today. And we need to take extra effort to guard our wildlife because the effects 
of disease is usually non-reversible. So what can we do about it? To begin with, in addition to the traditional model of law enforcement, we need to introduce wildlife health programs that will focus on the health of the wildlife. We can do this by, first of all, changing our policies and strategies that focuses on the health of livestock that is around conservation areas, with the objective of preventing spillover of pathogens from our livestock into our wildlife population. This has an added benefit in that it will attract people that are involved in poaching to alternative livelihoods, because livestock will become attractive. In addition to that, this would promote healthy food and healthy use of our livestock products. We also need to encourage and raise awareness that wildlife is a national treasure and it is a heritage of us as a people. As we guard them against poaching and habitat loss, we also need to protect them from infectious diseases. Thank you.